and welcome to Carolina Varsity. This is our 2016 season, and we're at week four, and we're going to do Pet Man's Best to Last. I'm Dale Ross. And I'm the Pet Man, Matt Morrow. We're going to jump right into it. Uh, number 22 is Garinger this week. They lost 42 to 8 to West Mac. No change in their ranking. Uh, number 21 is Hopewell. They dropped five spots as a result of their 44 0 loss to Mooresville. Number 20 is Independence. They dropped one spot with their 14 and 12 loss to Olympic. Number 19 is West Shaw. They dropped one spot. They have 26 to nothing loss to Harding. Number 18 is Olympic. Uh, they move up three spots with their 14 12 victory over Independence. Number 17 is Barry. Um, they defeated the bye, <laughs> so they move right. up three spots. <laughs> Uh, number 16 is Providence. They move up a spot despite losing 14 to 7 to Myers Park. Number 15 is Rocky River. They lost, they dropped three spots, uh, losing 41 24 to Sun Valley. No change in their ranking this week. Number 14 is Porter Ridge. They won 17 14 over Hunter Huss. Number 13 moving up two spots is Hardy, uh, winning 26 0 over West Charlotte. Number 12 is North Mech, losing 28-18 to East Mech, but they move up a spot. For additional comments on 12 through 22, I will post a separate video explaining those rankings and uh, why they are where they are. I expect some of you will have some comments about this, maybe. <laughs> Just maybe, because you did last week. So um, Now, the top 11, which I think are the best 11 teams in the area by far. Mm -hmm. uh, number 11 is West Mac. They won 42 to 8 over Garinger and you know they were up 42 nothing yep. uh, in the second quarter and Coach Davis called the dogs off. Got uh, the starters out with some backups in and uh, Garinger was able to score in that situation. Uh, but you got to be impressed with, with uh, what West Mac has done uh, so far early in the season. Yep, dynamic offense. I saw them against Vance. This is a team to watch out for. They they very well could challenge at the top of the South Mech games. Oh, I can't wait yeah. to see those conference games. Number 10, East Mecklenburg. They won 28-18 over North Mech. No change in their ranking, though. But um, I know you were there, and you were very impressed with some yep. of the things East Mech did. Yep. Uh, defense played well. Uh, they had a tough running back to uh, go against in Wilson, and uh, they, uh, they were able to shut him down after him having some good runs early. But uh, just like uh, what we were expecting out of these good run team, heavy run team, and mm -hmm. uh, we'll see how we'll see how things shake out. But I think they're going to be a, a team that will be uh, making noise at the top of the Southwestern Four. -end. I agree with you. Yeah. Number nine, R.J. Kell, no change in their ranking. They did win 36-34, wild game over Marvin Ridge, but they beat a good team on the road on Thursday night. And uh, we'll be there. Me and Brandon will be there this Friday when they play up uh, Huff. And uh, this team has looked um, good, especially on the offensive side of the ball. Luke carefully throwing the ball. Mm -hmm. Jalen Irwin making catches. Cade McDonald uh, kind of complimenting him. And uh, Nico Crew at running back doing a really good job as well. Yeah. I think Arthur Kell, you know, just like I said with uh, West Mech, uh, they really look to be a team that's going to contend at the top. Uh, I think they got the tools offensively, defensively yeah. they need to – uh, maybe put some things together, but uh, I think this is a dangerous team, and I think that's a great win over Marvin Ridge, actually. I, I agree with you. Number eight, Myers Park, no change in the ranking. They won 14-7 to over Providence, uh, played Monday night, and um, Coach Chadwick uh, came out and said that his team has a, a few injuries that they're dealing with, and um, can't take anyone lightly. And right. he said his team probably took Providence kind of lightly to play 4 a Charlotte football, the best football in the state, and um, you know, luckily they were able to get out of there with a win, though. Yeah, a lot of if you look at the off schedule, playing Monday night, lots of injuries. Maybe a team that easy for the kids to overlook because what did Vance do to yeah. them the yeah. week before, and they came out with a win. Uh, so there are some positives I think to, to take away from that. That with all that, they mm -hmm. were they were able to manage a win. That's kind of a that's, that's something that you could actually get tripped up on. That's right. Yeah. So. Uh, number seven is Charlotte Catholic. No change in their ranking this week. A 27-0 victory over Country Day. And it's very impressive for that defense. Uh, they mm -hmm. lost so many kids off of that defense, especially in the linebacker court. Uh, but it looks like the defense has come together. 
um, early on for the Cougars, and yeah. once they get in the conference play, I think we'll kind of see how um, well, we'll see that defense get get a stronger test. I believe. Well, true, but they, you know, coming into the season, we questioned we did whether defense might be a problem. Yeah. And you knew the offense was going to have to build, and uh, and we know that they will, and they'll get mm-hmm. in sync to have the defense playing this well. That really helps that offense. So yeah, yeah. But, Good job once again by uh, Coach Bradowitz and that staff. Exactly. Number six, dropping two spots is South Mac losing 38-25 in Northwestern. It's a game me and Brandon attended, and I tell you, Northwestern jumped up on them 31-0. And, you know, I think it was a little bit of nerves. You know, District 3 Stadium is big. It's got bright lights, and despite the weather, it was a decent crowd. And, you know, once South Mac was able to settle down, and kind of counter the onslaught Northwestern put on them, they were able to play with them. Oh. And, um, you know, it was a good sign that they didn't give up and they had some success in the second half. And um, it's something to build on going into a tough game. Well, they're going to have to learn to play in these kind of uh, situations. And I, I've been assured by some people that uh, they have learned from their mm-hmm. this game. So that's important. Lose a... Northwestern's not a bad team. That's oh, a very, man. very good ball club. Uh-huh. So uh, just take the loss and move on, but learn from it. It's going to be the important part. Yeah, exactly. Uh, number five, moving up one spot in the rankings this week is A.L. Brown. They won 49 nothing over Northwest Cabarrus. They didn't have to really sweat too much. Northwest Cabarrus is down right now. And um, A.L. Brown, even though they played Monday, they were able to get their starters out pretty early, rest them up. And um, they play again Friday night in the Patriotism Bowl against Mooresville. That's a great thing right. uh, that those two schools are participating in. But um, once again, the defense has a sh- uh, shutout. And uh, I know you're impressed with the A.O. Brown defense overall. I think might be the second best defense on this list. Uh, we need a game other than Concord to tell me that. But yeah. uh, they, they look to be, and I think they're going to be in that mix of two through four in the Mecca. I agree. Speaking of the Mecca, Number four is another Mecca team dropping two spots. It's Huff. Losing 35-34 to Lake Norman, and we talked about injury with Myers Park. Huff is also battling some injuries of their own right now, and I know you attended yeah. that Lake Norman Huff game. So Huff got to learn to play uh, in big games and learn to have some emotion in yourself. Uh, mm-hmm. I think that, to me, that is the biggest takeaway I get out of that game is how flat they play. Uh, and it's just like that Mount Creek uh, playoff game last year where they just kind of trying to be businesslike. And mm-hmm. Lake Norman uh, lived on emotion, and it served them well. And it could serve, uh, I think, uh, Huff a little well if they could uh, find a little bit more emotion. So we'll see. And uh, I'll be excited to see them this Friday yeah. night um, at Archer Kill. And um, I think that'll be a nice crowd at that game. Should be. Um, should be a good football game. Number three, moving up two spots is Vance. They won 48-7 over George Washington. And the uh, Vance offense, another impressive showing, and you were at that game. Yep, very, very dominating game against uh, George Washington. Uh, offense and the Fetty was just phenomenal. Vance stopped themselves. George Washington didn't stop them. They look good. I mean, they look very, very good. I I'm, uh, I'm very left that game thinking... Vance, to me, is the second. I think they're the second best team. All right. So, and George Washington was ranked number 25 in Virginia, so that's another great win for mm-hmm. North Carolina and Charlotte football. Yep. Uh, number two, in my opinion, sure. <laughs> is uh, Butler. And they won 34-7 over Western Alamance and move up a spot. Uh, that game was tied 7-7 in the third quarter until Butler kind of woke up and uh, scored 27 unanswered points to win that football game. Um, but, you know, they did what they needed to do. Yep. They dominated eventually a uh, good 3A team in Western Alabama. It's not a pushover. And um, going up there and getting it done is a um, good job for Coach Brian Hales and his staff. And I can't throw stones at you they're, they're, uh, for picking them number two because <laughs> that's they're a, good, they're a good football team. And I think that personally in my mind the closeness of Butler and uh, Vance is it's real close. That, uh, mm-hmm. You know, I, I don't argue with that. It's a good pick, and I think they win Friday night. The, the ability to come back 
uh, and when I said come back, I mean come back to themselves. And, yeah. Uh, you know, only only being up seven and then boomed, uh, uh, blowing it out like they should. That's there's a lot to be said for that. So, yeah, it is. And on the road, yeah, they did what they had to. They did what they were supposed to do. It just they just didn't do it early. They did it late. So. Right. And no dispute on this one. Uh, yeah. Number one is Mallet Creek. <laughs> Won 21 to 14 over Burns and Mallet Creek, doing it with defense the way they've done it. Um, Pretty much all season long here, and you were at the Burns game, and what impressed you the most? Defense. <laughs> <laughs> the defense. The defense played awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is a very good defensive team, and I think when that offense gets in sync and clicking, uh, this is going to be a. It's already a dangerous team. I, I think they've seen the toughest of their schedule, mm-hmm. even into the playoffs. I think uh, in Dillon and Burns, they've probably seen their toughest games. Uh, I think it's just—it's hard for me to see any team being able to compete with them. They're going to have to stop themselves. Right, right. So that's the best of last. And once again, remember, look for my video on the uh, breakdown for 12 through 22, and I'll tell you why I ranked those teams the way I did. Comment uh, below on the forums. And um, I appreciate all your feedback. If you agree, disagree, doesn't matter to me. Um, Thank you for watching. Thanks. Let us know.